that's really exciting. Um, bloodline is what that's called, bloodline. bloodline. And uh, it was really great to sit down actually with Jeremiah because, you know, even though he's my son, how often do you just sit around and talk about, you know, your your past and the history of tattoo? And even though he he was in the shop, you know, hanging out since, yeah. you know, it's like my constantly son. since he was two years old, you know, he was there every day. Yeah. But still, there's all the stories and the things he wasn't aware of, you know, so it's nice to share that. And on his podcast, we got, I think, to the 80s. So at the end of the podcast, he said, let's pick it back up and go next decade. So we're might be doing, you know, like decade by decade. Yeah. So I'm kind of excited about that. See what kind of, you know, history we can get into and get into things that haven't been touched on yet. It's always cool to see like the, um, the family kind of following in the footsteps too. Like when I was out there, I think Jeremiah was five years yeah. old, you know, something like that. But it's really cool to see the, especially with like historic, you know, families of tattooing to, to see their, the, the, the children get into it. The kids kind of take up Jeremiah kind of, he, how long has he been tattooing now for? I was trying to figure that out. So I think decade, he did his, I think he did his first, ta- he was, let's see, gosh. I don't know. Uh, definitely over a decade. I'm going to say closer because yeah. he started, did his first one at like 15, I think. So 20, wow. let's see, how old is he? Maybe right now, around 20 years. I'd have to get out the calculator now. Yeah. See, you're, you're dating me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. My son's just now going, he's 26 and he's just now starting his apprenticeship, you know, and I didn't just want to hand it to him, you know, he was kind of yeah. trying to figure out if he wanted to do music. So he finally buckled down. He's like, all right, I, you know, cause he's, I got a granddaughter now, and, you know? So I guess, so he's like, all right. I think he wants, he's looking at the family kind of family lineage of tattooing mm-hmm. and he's finally yeah. getting into it, which feels, feels really good. You know, it is really good. Uh, Jeremiah's daughter, his oldest daughter, he has two daughters. Um, the older one, she contemplated, getting into tattooing so she actually you know came to the shop was working here as shop help for a bit and then she you know she was kind of him and hawing around whether she wanted to do that at the time or go into designing fashion and things of that nature which has migrated into now she's into wanting to design gaming you know so uh she might come back she's a very good artist uh follows in her dad's footsteps you know so we'll see if that goes that way or a different direction, but yeah. there's still the little ones too. <laughs> yeah. We got yeah. the little one yet. Art could take you in so many different directions, you know, like I never thought I'd with my art as a kid, I didn't think I'd get into tattooing. Oh, know? I never would have imagined so I was going to be know, a tattooer. Yeah. Like where your mm-hmm. art is going to take you or, you know, where you're going to, what field you're going to get interested in. what do you think you were going to do with art there? I actually thought I was going to be a carpenter believe it or not, mm-hmm. because I grew up in my grandfather's wood, uh, you know, woodworking shop, a giant woodworking shop. And even at his funeral, there was other woodworkers that were like comparing him to like an 18th century woodworker. Mm-hmm. So Ooh. that was one of the directions I was going to go was carpentry because, and it was artistic the stuff. My grandfather was doing with like carpentry was artistic. So mm-hmm. as a kid, that, that's what caught my eye, but I was already like drawing. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, my story is I found punk rock and skateboarding and that type of art was everywhere. So yeah. that's that's kind of what sparked my interest with tattooing. You know? I want you? I wanted to be like either like a medical illustrator or I wanted to do something like sculptural. Mm-hmm. I really wanted sculptural. to work in a foundry. Yeah, yeah, that was my goal. Like I wanted to stay on like the classical discipline and work my way into a big foundry. Yeah, that was my goal. That'd be right. Yeah, but I like I the like direction we all went. I think I we like all went the, the right direction. Carrie, what about what? you? Yeah. Like an artistic yeah. foundry? That's kind of interesting. I used to work in a foundry. Uh, yeah. Before I tattooed, I was uh, I used to do the core assembly, kind of the sculpture that they pour the metal into for the F-18 fighter jet. I used oh, to do I that. I would love yeah. to play with stuff. Yeah. That's what you were doing before tattooing? <laughs> One of the things, you know, I've had many a career before tattooing, yeah. but yeah. started out as a donut baker. You know, I think everybody knows that I used to bake donuts and then, uh, you know, I had a little you know, mini blind job. And I worked at a book bindery and lots of little things along the way, but, uh, the foundry, I was there quite a while. Yeah. You could do a donut tattoo studio price still. I bet. You could... Oh God. I hope not. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's funny. Cause at the, at the original red tree location, uh, in Italian village, when I opened up red tree, um, 
there was a, a cookie and crepe shop attached to us mm, and so good no it was good but we all got like 10 to 15 yeah. pounds like overweight pretty quick <laughs> there, were, there were times that i was se sessions where adam would open up the window by the stairs and he'd like stick his head out yeah. and holler and then a few yeah. minutes later our, come yep. over so yeah it was kind of dangerous it was, it was too good. easy it was good for clients yeah. for like yeah. blood sugar but it wasn't good for our you know waistlines i enjoyed Absolutely. it when i was getting tattooed there for sure yeah oh yeah snacks yeah. are great what the... we had a bakery too we had a bakery by the anaheim shop there and uh you know uh tito's tacos was right there we had all kind of great food right around around are us still, there so i are you still at that location that was the beach and ball location right yeah not there anymore so we closed that down i'm gonna say maybe six seven years ago um long beach you know the the oldest shop in the country, the oldest shop in the nation here is where we're at now in, in Long yeah. Beach, uh, Burt Grimm's old shop. So the one That's in right, Anaheim, yeah. we, we just consolidated things. We ha I had four shops at the time and it got to be a little too spread out, too much to handle. Too much. So I'm, I'm down to two now That's probably nice. and ended up, yeah, I closed that one and then I closed the one over in Orange. But Jeremiah took that over for a while. Okay. Jeremiah took over the Orange Studio mm -hmm. and uh, then later on decided to do his own thing. So he works on it with him just with himself now in yeah. at Conclave, which is in Sunset Beach. OK, nice. Heck yeah. So you got two locations and you got Burt Grimm's old studio. How did you yep. come about getting Burt Grimm's studio? How did that all work out? I was kind of super lucky, but um, Rick Walters was, you know, they had the shop up for sale at the time you know, uh, the Shaw brothers had the shop up for sale and Rick was like, you should buy the shop. You should buy the shop. And, you know, at the time I already had the other three shops and I really didn't want to handle another shop, but, you know, long story short, then it got to a point where, um, the shop was in jeopardy and they were going to close it down, you know, and we heard that they were just going to ditch it. And I was like, Oh my God, the uh, history. Yeah. yeah, everything. It's like the oldest shop. It's the only one still running that's that old. And so, you know, I got together with a friend and, you know, uh, approached them about taking over the shop. And it, at that time, they had already closed the actual shop by a couple days. So people were coming by and, Start you know, getting their little memorabilia piece, you know. And uh, when we came by here, it was, you know, pretty much stripped. There was only a few things laying around on the floor and things like that. But uh, we took it over in 03 and got it back up and running, running, you know, tattooing as soon as we possibly could. And there was, you know, a lot of things once once there's a sale involved, the, uh, the city steps in and says, oh, you got to, you know, fix your electrical. Yeah. And you got to do this and you got to do this, you know, so there was all that. But. That said, you know, we got it up and going pretty quick, but it was Rick who suggested nice. it. And uh, he, he kind of calls himself my, or called himself my tattoo godfather or grandfather, you know, <laughs> you know, because uh, I used to work for uh, Fat George in La Puente, who Rick taught to tattoo. So okay. kind of that downstream.